Hey, 42 here. If you're anything like me, you probably spend your days pondering profound questions like, do eyebrows count as facial hair? And if we only ever use bath towels when we're clean, why do we need to wash them? But some people, let's call them scientists, are at this very moment engaged with even bigger questions than can crop circles be square? Some of these cosmic conundrums include what is the universe made of? Why does matter exist? And what's going on in the center of the sun? Solving these puzzles seems to depend on us understanding something even more mysterious than the mysteries themselves. The neutrino. Apart from sounding like a brand of breakfast cereal, neutrinos are the current darlings of the physics world, attracting hundreds of millions of dollars in research investment. They are also amongst the tiniest and most abundant particles in the universe. You wouldn't know it though, because you can't see them. And not just because they're even smaller than your dad's Twitter following. They're literally invisible. To understand why, we need to take a quick refresher course on the four fundamental forces of nature governing everything that happens in the universe. Gravity, electromagnetism, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force. You'll hopefully be familiar with gravity. It's the one that keeps the Earth in orbit around the sun and stops you from drifting off into space when you fart. It exists between any objects that have mass or energy. Unlike the other three, gravity isn't a force at all. But the curving of space-time, which causes objects to deviate from a straight path, Electromagnetism is the physical interaction between electrically charged particles. It's what keeps atoms from falling apart and talking about their feelings, and it relies on the exchange of photons, which are also the particle components of light. The weak nuclear force is responsible for particle decay, which happens when one type of subatomic particle has an identity crisis and changes into another. This force plays a big role in the nuclear fusion that powers the sun and, by implication, all life on Earth. Finally, the strong nuclear force is, as the name implies, really strong. In fact, it's 6,000 trillion 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 times stronger than gravity. But it operates at a quantum level, binding the fundamental particles of matter together. I have to say, it's reassuring to know someone's taking care of that. Neutrinos are immune to the strong force and electromagnetism, which means they don't react with light, literally can't be seen and are only affected by the weak force and gravity. But since they have almost zero mass, even gravity hardly touches them. Now, you might be wondering just how we know that these unimaginably tiny, not to mention invisible, little buggers even exist. And the truth is, we didn't, until relatively recently. In the 1930s, the scientific community was puzzling over a phenomenon known as beta decay, a process in which an atom's nucleus spontaneously emits an electron. The problem was, the behavior of the various particles at play in beta decay didn't seem to make sense, apparently violating the laws of the conservation of both energy and momentum the world's finest minds were stumped. That is, until physicist Wolfgang Pauli came along and postulated that a previously unknown particle might be involved to balance the mathematical books, the neutrino. Even then, it still took another 26 years until we were actually able to detect one directly. Which is funny, really, when you consider that every second about 50 trillion neutrinos from the sun pass through our bodies. Not into our bodies, literally straight through. And then they travel all the way through the earth and on with their journey to God alone knows where. When you're a neutrino, matter simply doesn't matter. It's enough to leave you feeling a bit violated. They could at least buy dinner first. Or those neutrinos could buy you the next best thing, a premium membership to today's sponsor, Blinkist. It probably wouldn't surprise you if I told you there's little I love more than reading non-fiction books. But these days, I rarely get the time. I'm sure you're in the same boat. 
Well, I recently discovered Blinkist. Instead of spending a few days reading a whole book, I can listen to all the best bits from over 3,000 non-fiction books in only 15 minutes. That's a pretty nifty idea if you ask me. I've been trying out Blinkist and it's been a game changer for my daily routine. I listen to a Blink whilst I'm having breakfast every morning and by the time I've drunk my last sip of coffee, I've learned new fascinating knowledge and musings from the world's best authors and thinkers. And if you want to dive a little deeper, premium members get a whopping 65% of full length audiobooks that you can listen to right in the Blinkist app. You can use Blinkist to save time and money and learn new things faster than ever before. Personally, I'd recommend The Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan. He doesn't just inform you about ancient civilizations and their trade, he tells you why it's important too. The first 100 people to visit my unique link below are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out completely free. And you can cancel at any time. But if you just can't get enough, then through my link, you'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. These subatomic ghosts are so difficult to influence that if you were to fire a neutrino into lead, it would travel for roughly two years at almost the speed of light before it came to a stop. That's about 19 trillion kilometers of lead. By contrast, it only takes about 10 centimeters to stop most of the radiation from a nuclear holocaust. And the seemingly random bugs that cause your computer to crash? Many are caused by neutrinos interacting with the roughly 70 atoms wide transistors in your computer's processor and memory. Except for Windows Blue Screen of Death, that's just shoddy programming. Neutrinos pose such a threat to reliable computing that mission critical data center servers use error correcting ECC memory, which patches the data corruption caused by neutrinos in real time. By now, you might be thinking, who cares? So what if there are more neutrinos in the universe than pretty much anything else? Beyond occasionally interrupting my Counter-Strike sessions, they're harmless, totally neutral, and seem to be minding their own business. They're basically the Switzerland of quantum reality. True, but these elusive particles may just be able to provide us with the answer to one of the biggest questions in science. Why the hell do we exist? Unless you're one of those people who believes the world was created by the flying spaghetti monster. If you've been watching my videos lately, you'll know that is a real religion, sort of. Then you're probably on board with the idea that the universe was born with the Big Bang about 13.8 billion years ago. What existed just before the Big Bang remains a topic for arm wrestling contests at cosmology conferences but scientists reckon they have a pretty good understanding of what happened just afterwards. Matter and antimatter began to spread throughout the infant universe, initiating a phase colloquially called the Hot Big Bang. And it's still going on today, causing the steady expansion of space. Matter, of course, is all around you. You can give it to your mum for Christmas in the form of a nice potted plant. You can tell it about your childhood trauma in the form of a psychiatrist. Matter is nothing if not varied. It's defined as any substance that has mass and takes up space. At a subatomic level, matter is made up of particles like electrons and protons that are the building blocks of physical reality. For each of these particles, there are antiparticles identical opposites that have opposite physical charges, but have the same mass and behave in the same way, at least according to current theories. Antimatter is matter made up of these antiparticles. Think of it like matter's evil twin. If matter and antimatter collide, they annihilate each other, releasing pure energy. You might have noticed there's not a lot of that going on most of the time. And that's because the universe is made up almost entirely of normal matter, with very little antimatter to annihilate. To be honest, I feel okay about that. But apparently, this asymmetry of matter and antimatter in the visible universe is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in physics. And that's why our little friend, the neutrino, 
is so hot right now, but more on that in a moment. It's important not to mistake antimatter for dark matter. The bizarre stuff that makes up about 85% of the total mass in the universe and about 27% of all energy and mass. If you're looking for some truly illuminating information on dark matter, then check out my video on the subject. But in a nutshell, this stuff offers an explanation for the excess gravity that magically seems to be holding galaxies together. Because physicists are really good with words, dark matter is exactly what it says on the tin. Dark. It does not absorb, emit, or reflect light, so we can't see it. There could be dark matter skinny dipping next to you right now, and you wouldn't even know it. The truth is, nobody's completely sure what dark matter actually is. But further proving their flair for wordplay, astrophysicists have come up with a few candidates, including machos, wimps, and gimps, not to be confused with the S&M roleplay game of the same name. Machos are massive astrophysical compact halo objects, basically bloody big blobs of normal matter, like stars that are just so dim we can't see them. GIMPs, or gravitationally interacting massive particles, are purely gravitational field singularities of space-time that react to gravity alone. WIMPs are weakly interacting massive particles, hypothetical elementary particles that are really heavy but only react to gravity and the weak nuclear force, making them invisible. Neutrinos can't be WIMPs because they have tattoos and open beer bottles with their teeth. And we also don't think they're heavy enough to account for all the dark matter in the universe. So why are astronomers, cosmologists, astrophysicists, and other party animals so obsessed with them? Because they may hold the answer to the matter-antimatter asymmetry problem we talked about earlier, which is a really big deal if your day job is unlocking the secrets to the origins of the universe. The riddle goes something like this. The Big Bang should have created equal amounts of matter and antimatter, which should, then, have annihilated each other in one big orgy of cancel culture. But they didn't. Instead, we have a universe awash with matter, and barely two particles of antimatter to rub together. So what exactly happened? Why did the balance tip in matter's favour? A study of neutrinos in Japan may just have found the answer. Contradicting established beliefs that matter and antimatter behave in equal but opposite ways, neutrinos and antineutrinos have been found to be doing pretty much their own thing. Neutrinos come in three flavours – electron, muon, and tau. If you're wondering why you've never seen muon ice cream, that's because flavour in this case, basically just means type. Yeah, those damned poetic physicists are at it again. Neutrinos are known to randomly change flavours through the process of particle decay. During a particle physics experiment called Tokai to Kamioka, or T2K, physicists tested the particle decay of neutrinos and antineutrinos. Theoretically, matter and antimatter are supposed to operate in the same way. In a universe made up entirely of antimatter, physics should work exactly the same as one made up of matter. So the probability of decay of the neutrinos should have matched the probability of decay of the antineutrinos. But it didn't. It's impressive enough that the T2K scientists even discovered that much. Remember that neutrinos are impossible to see and travel freely through matter, so as you can imagine, they're pretty difficult to study. Like the Bat Cave, this project started with a bloody big hole deep underground. The Super Cameo Candy Neutrino Detector in Japan is located a kilometre below the Earth's surface, just deep enough that the sun's radiation won't interfere with the experiments. There, the inside of a massive stainless steel cylindrical tank is covered in more than 11,000 sensors that look like giant bubble wrap wallpaper and filled with 50,000 litres of pure water. 
It sounds like the lair of some science-obsessed Bond villain. But this tank isn't there to house laser sharks, it's designed to catch neutrinos and anti-neutrinos fired from a particle accelerator research complex 295 kilometers away. What physicists are watching out for are not these particles themselves, but the reactions that sometimes occur when a neutrino or an anti-neutrino collides with an electron. Imagine the smallest particle in existence traveling at almost a speed of light, smashing into one of the other smallest particles in existence, and you get a sense of how difficult this is to see. Luckily, despite being invisible, the neutrinos and their evil twin counterparts have other ways of showing themselves, namely through Cherenkov radiation. That's the glow emitted when a particle travels faster than the speed of light through a given medium. Kind of like a sonic boom, but for light. This cool blue glow is created in the Super Cameo Candé detector when a neutrino or antineutrino collides with an electron, sending it ricocheting off faster than the speed of light in water. By measuring these events, scientists are able to learn about the flavor of neutrino involved and where it came from, which gives them insights into the origins of stars and even the Big Bang. It's also possible to determine the likelihood that the neutrino or antineutrino in question changed flavor during its journey. And as it turns out, neutrinos appear to be rather more likely to change flavor than antineutrinos, calling into question the long-held theory that matter and its antimatter counterpart have identical, if opposite, properties. If this is the case, it could well explain the asymmetry of matter and antimatter we observe in the universe. That's quite exciting, but it took the T2K experiment 10 years to study just 90 neutrinos and 15 antineutrinos in what must have been the most boring game of cosmic billiards ever. To help solve this problem, the Japanese will soon be building Hyper Kamio Kande, or Hyper K, the largest neutrino detector in history, at almost five times the size of the current version. It will cost about $600 million and will be dedicated to studying neutrinos and their antimatter opposites. That's a lot of money to study something that goes straight through you. I had a curry like that once, and it only cost me five quid. Joining Hyper K will be the deep underground neutrino experiment, Dune, due to start in the United States in 2025, and the Jiangmen Underground Neutrino Observatory, Juno, in China, which is expected to come online in 2021. But what do we hope to gain by building all of these bloody great underground swimming pools? Whilst the results of the current T2K experiment are not statistically significant on their own, having only studied a relatively small number of neutrino and anti-neutrino collisions, installations like Hyper K and June are needed if we are to get a final answer to that darn matter-antimatter enigma. If we can prove once and for all that neutrinos and antineutrinos really do behave differently, we open the window to a new understanding of why the universe is full of stuff instead of a big empty place with a couple of drunk photons singing karaoke in the corner. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check it out using the link in the description.